In this module, we'll show you how to clean or replace a clogged injector or screen. Symptoms are overfill of water in a brine tank, no soft water, or salty service water. If you believe you have injection issues with a FLEC 2510 valve, the first thing you need to do is make sure that all connections in the brine system are airtight. On this valve, we check for the connection that runs to the brine tank as well as the connectors on this gray tube, making sure every one is airtight. We then check to make sure that the two screws on top of the assembly are secure. To make this easier to view, we have removed the assembly from this valve to show the intricacies of the parts. We begin the disassembly by removing the two screws from the cap. On the bottom of the cap, there is a gasket. We want to check the gasket to make sure that there are no cuts or damage to it. It would need to be replaced if there is damage. We then have access to the screen and two-piece injector assembly. The screen assembly is removed from the housing. This cylinder should be hollow on both ends. It is normal to have a crush on one end where it's sealed to the body. A new unit will be a perfect cylinder. If there is damage, the screen will need to be replaced. If there is dirt or debris, we can clean with a soft brush and warm water. We do not want to use any metal tools on any of the components in this system. We then move back to the body to remove the top piece of the injector system. We loosen the top piece by unthreading it with a slotted screwdriver. Once loose, we remove it from the housing. We inspect both the top and bottom to make sure that there is no damage or debris that is caught in it. We can clean this as well with a soft brush and warm water. No metal tools or files should be used. We then move to the inner part of the injector inside the body. We unthread this using another slotted screwdriver of a smaller size. Once we unthread it, it can also be removed from the body. We check to make sure that we can see through both ends of the injector. If we cannot, we need to try and remove the debris with a soft brush and warm water. If either of the components are unable to be cleaned, they need to be replaced with the same color and material for the assembly. The 1600 system has many materials and colors. Your system was designed for the color and material that you have based on tank size and the pressure of operation. Please make sure to use the same color. If your system has a black plug, there is only one piece. There would not be a second internal component. This is plugged and is used for filter applications. Once we have our new components, we can then move to the body and inspect it. We check all connection points to make sure there are no cracks or areas where there is damage. We then check the connections and make sure that they are sealed with plumber's tape as necessary. On the bottom of the unit, there is a flow disperser. This makes sure that the salt and water mixture is properly mixed before it goes into the tank. Below this is a gasket. This gasket needs to be secure and complete to make sure that there is no air brought into the system. We can then begin our reassembly process. We start with the smaller portion of the injector, tightening down with a slotted screwdriver. The upper part of the injector can then be installed using a larger slotted screwdriver. The screen can then be reinstalled if it is able to be cleaned 
or a new one put in. Checking our gasket, we can then put the cap back on. On these units, we identify which injector is underneath the cap with the number. For the 1600 system, the number one indicates the white injector. You can reference this number to make sure you are matching the correct injector for your system. We can then reinstall the assembly onto the valve, making sure that all connection points are secure. Since these are flare connections, no plumber's tape should be used. Once installed, we can repressurize the system and check our progress. Good luck and thanks for watching.